episode number 123, Poker Health. Welcome to the Heads Up Poker Podcast. This is Steve Barton, and thank you for tuning in. Thank you for all your tweets. Thank you for your follows, and uh, thank you for your reviews. We've got a new review this week from Craig, uh, representing the UK. Great hosts and good guests. Uh, all around enjoyable and informative poker discussion. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate that. This week, we have uh, three guests. We've got uh, Mark Golub, Paul Duick, and Laura Char. Welcome. Thank you guys for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Glad to be here. Yes. I uh, I first met Mark through Twitter. Um, it was a while ago. And Mark was interesting because he's a teacher of health and and he's a poker player. And uh, you have some nice scores, by the way, Mark. Uh, 21K, 33K. Uh, well done. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. And um, Mark was... Um, He's kind of taken a fascination to nutrition and how it affects you at the poker table. And um, anyways, I thought it would be neat to have you on the show, Mark. And you uh, you asked if you could have a couple of uh, your business partners slash friends. So you guys are all crowded around a, uh, a microphone right now. And I, I got all three of you on. <laughs> we're, we're, we're cuddling right next to each other. We're, yes, we're are so you holding hands? <laughs> <laughs> Kumbaya moment. <laughs> yes. And uh, so, Mark, you're a poker player. Uh, Paul, you're also a poker player. And Laura, uh, lo and behold, you're also a poker player. <laughs> yes, indeed I am. Story yes. checks out. <laughs> and, uh, Paul, so you've been, uh, uh, you're, um, you've been playing for, um, quite a while. You like the game. Um, but, uh, you're probably an entrepreneur first. And then, uh, poker is definitely a, a, a good hobby at, uh, you know, a few that's, times a uh, month. That's correct. Yes. Okay. And Laura, you're hoping to make that next step to uh, pro, right? You're you're going two to three times a week. Um, you're a full time teacher, but uh, what what what's your goal for that? Do you think in another, in the next five years or the next? Well, I'm hoping sooner, but you know, like we can hope, and then if it becomes later, then that's fine. I am hoping to be in the WSOP at some point, and maybe on TV. So that is my goal. That's your goal, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> goal you know, for the glory. It, it, anybody can. And I think I I'd like to have my picture up on that wall. What uh, what do you what do you play right now? Do you play cash mainly or tournaments or? Um, lately, I've been playing tournaments because we have a big tournament coming here. But I do play both. So okay. there's a, obviously a different strategy for both that I'm trying to hone in on and, and get better at. Which one do you like better? Oh, that's a that's a question. Um, which one do I like better? I think for the action and the excitement, I prefer the cash. Uh, for for the reads and the, the the learning, I think I prefer the the tournaments because you get to see a lot and uh, without having to spend a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's one Not buy that I spend in. Spend a lot of money, you know. I mean, earn a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like tournaments too. I play cash every now and then, uh, but uh, for me, there's there's no feeling like shipping a tournament, and it uh, I love it. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, Mark, um, so, um, I'm, I'm curious about you, you, a bit of an entrepreneur like, uh, like Paul and, uh, Laura, and, uh, you guys, you sell, you've kind of solved a, uh, a problem of, um, nutrition at the poker table, right? Yeah. It, yeah. I've, uh, I actually have a couple other online businesses and it's kind of a, a poker love story with Paul and I. I met him at the casino. He was wearing a, a shirt that said uh, USANA. And it's a company that I was very familiar with back about 15 years prior when in my early 20s. And I, and I knew how good they were from a nutritional standpoint. And it was right around the time when I saw him, uh, I was about 35, and it was right around the time that I actually said to myself that I'm going to get back on the products for my own health purposes just for myself. And also playing poker at the same time, basically – through conversation, uh, Paul said, you know what, why don't you consider doing the business one more time because, you know, it's an awesome opportunity. And I'm thinking, you know what, why not? And my brother and I actually do this together. He's a firefighter paramedic too. So I uh, I said, sure, let's do this. And so I went to my brother. We shook hands. We did it for – we said we're going to do this for a solid year and uh, see how it goes. So having said that uh, – talked to Paul some more. We both had poker in common and USANA in common. And 
we realized it just kind of just we were talking in his office one day and it kind of just came out of nowhere. How cool would it be to bring the nutrition of USANA, the nutritional advantage that Olympic athletes and professional athletes and elite athletes all trust to the poker table? And, you know, and I have a serious passion for for disease prevention, for teaching people about physiology and biology and nutrition. And I see so many poor nutritional choices by players um, where there could be changes and to give the serious player a real advantage. So there are players that are looking for for healthy alternatives that where they don't sacrifice taste or anything like that. And. You know, it just kind of poker health just came out of nowhere, and we thought, wow, what a great way to to, to market to a huge demographic. So, yeah, that's kind of where it came from, and we've been rolling with it, and it's been exciting and a lot of success since then. Yeah, it. Uh, and you guys just wrote an article for uh, uh, for a magazine that's going to have thirty thousand out at the WSOP. Yeah, we're super psyched. So uh, I happened to come up, just kind of like how I came across you on Twitter. I came across Casino World Magazine on Instagram and uh, learning what to mag- – and it turns out I've been reading their magazine uh, a few weeks ago at our casino, uh, Regent uh, Casino in Winnipeg here. And I thought, how cool would it be for us to be featured in there? So I contacted them and asked if we can do that. Now, there's something special about this. The first year I started USANA with Paul, within a few months, that was when I cashed in the first – tournament I played in the World Series of Poker, and I applied everything about USANA to my poker game, and the results were unbelievable. Doing these 12-hour sessions three times a day, I was never sick, my energy was high, I slept like a baby, I came home not sick, not stressed, and that is something special, and I thought, you know what, if that worked for me in the first time, this is going to work for a lot of other people. So, Looking around Vegas and the Rio, and I'm looking for some uh, people to talk to about this and see what they think. I came across uh, Chris Moneymaker standing at the table buying some headphones. And I thought, well, I'm going to talk to Chris. And so we had a little conversation. And next thing you know, we're having lunch. And uh, we talked to him about our healthy energy drink and some of our healthy fast foods. And he he liked it. And he, he, was, um, he was trying them. And he really enjoyed them. So we formed a relationship over the years. And he now... Uh, was comfortable to allow us to have his endorsement for Rev3, which is the energy drink, which I'm sure we'll talk about. And we put him in the uh, magazine article, which you will see uh, coming out right when this podcast pretty much comes out. So May 1st for the May-June issue, they're going to be printing 60,000 magazines. 30,000 of them will be in the Rio alone. So it's going to be really awesome. We have a two-page spread. One is about the company and some of the uh, the basics, like uh, how do you do a health assessment, uh, which are the products that we recommend for poker players. And then the other side, the other page is uh, about Rev3, the uh, the two options of uh, drinks that we have. Um, so, yeah, it's very, very cool. This is all happening at once. You know, this this solves a problem I was, uh, I was telling you about um, before is that I've had students that They'll come to me before they go do a, a tournament uh, series. And um, when I get the, there, there's kind of a basic list of questions that I go down, you know, to get to know a student for the first time. And, um, you know, when I ask them about what's their meal plan, because, you know, these tournaments, some go 12, 14 hours. And <laughs> it kills me when they say, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, what do you plan on eating? And they say, I don't know. I'll probably just get a pizza when I get tired or when I, uh, on the dinner break. And I'm like, you're killing me, bro. <laughs> because <laughs> it's uh, like, are you trying to lose this tournament? Like, what, it, exactly. You exactly. have to have some type of set meal plan that's not going to make you crash two hours after eating it, and you know that's going to allow you to go the distance and be focused for you know more than half of a day. For sure. And um, you know, I I remember seeing this uh, like right in front of me at, at uh, this was a little tournament I played in Vegas. It was a hundred and little over a hundred people. Um, and at the dinner break, we were down to, I believe, uh, you know, below 20, you know, and these two guys order a pizza, a large pizza, and they split it on the dinner break. They ate it right at the poker table, like the adjacent one. And, um, I remember thinking, I'm like, well, if we're down to 15, it just went down to 13. Uh, you know, those two guys, they just took themselves out of the equation and they did. They were some of the first to bust right after that. And I don't think that the pizza was a coincidence. You know, they're, um, they're just setting themselves up for failure. How can you eat half of a large pizza when the tournament is still going to go another six hours 
yeah. and expect that you're going to make it. You know, and and you know, I don't, I don't, I don't blame them for that. They're, they're, this is one of the things as a teacher that I really uh, love about this this opportunity. It's bringing the knowledge to people. It's a teachable moment. Like in my classroom, I give my kids teachable moments all the time, especially when I see a change in their behavior from from uh, unhealthy eating to healthy eating or anything anything along those lines. It's a really cool thing to see. Now, as a as an educator in the in the poker world. You know, a lot of people don't understand the effects that pizza, or fast food, or sodas, or or um, uh, typical energy drinks, things of that nature. What that causes to their body, what that causes to their to their focus, their mental focus, their memory, you name it. And it, and you know, and all your listeners know that, you know, key decisions can literally make or break your tournament, right? Or cost you hundreds or thousands of dollars. So to get that edge, that's that's and understand how your body works in such a simple way. It's so critical if you're going to, you know, play the game seriously, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. It, um, and now, what uh, what are some of the things that you guys have? You guys have uh, energy drinks, you have uh, granola bars, um, you know, go through, go through some of your more uh, popular ones. Okay, uh, sure. Well, we have three, we have three lines of products where USANA is known primarily for their micronutrients, their supplements. Um, it's a full range of personalized supplements from a multivitamin, a very special one, um, to, to products that, uh, support, uh, um, cardiovascular health, skeletal health, digestive health, immune support, uh, nervous system support. So it's designed where it can be totally customized just for each player. And um, we have a really cool tool called the health is true health assessment that anyone can go do. It takes about 10 minutes. It's free. You go online to pokerhealth.com and it'll, it'll ask you a series of questions and then it'll tell you what your health risks, risks are and what products that you should look at, uh, at, uh, consuming. From the food side, the healthy fast foods, we have something called My Smart Foods, and they're not granola bars. They're, there's a, a series of shakes. Uh, they are protein shakes, but they are very advanced macronutrition wise. They are loaded with advanced fats, coconut fats, or medium chain triglycerides, MCTs, many people have probably heard of. They are loaded with fiber and protein, and they're very filling, which is a great thing to have at a poker table when you've got the hunger pains. Um, we've got uh, protein bars and whole foods bars. Uh, again, very high in fiber. They're high in fiber, protein, and coconut fats. So this is the cool thing, though, about these foods. They taste delicious. So for the people who are looking for that comfort food feeling, like the pizza eaters, okay, that's great. It gives them that comfort feeling. But on, on the other side of the coin, it sacrifices their health and it causes them to, to have a drop in energy and lose that mental focus. So that's not a good combination. Our yeah. foods give you the best of both worlds. So that's a really cool thing. And then the energy drink, uh, Rev, Rev Can Drink, is a wonderful sustained energy type of drink that's super nourishing for you. It's a great alternative to the sodas and the um, and the typical energy drinks. There's no crash. It's got a low glycemic impact, and that's what's so different about it. And then we've got a skincare line, a personal care line uh, that uh, Laura is looking absolutely lovely after what two months of using it. So 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 when you combine the the supplements which nourishes your cells from the inside, a hundred trillion cells you have, nourishing them every day from the inside. Your body heals itself amazingly well, and you treat your your skin from the outside. Man, I'm telling you, the the effects are 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 unbelievable. You you know, I I can't stress it enough. This is the highest level nutrition in the world. But it's also about education. It's also about eating healthy and having a good diet and getting lots of water and sleeping well. It's the it's the whole holistic approach. So that's, yeah. This this solves the problem though of the of the pizza at the uh, and the spaghetti at the sure. at the poker table. And you fill what? in the missing gap so that you're missing from your diet, right? I mean, it's it's a rigorous schedule playing poker, and you know that it's very difficult to eat healthy all the time. So you can try to eat healthy, and we we encourage that, of course. But you're just going to be missing missing nutrients in your diet 24 seven, and this is a way to fill in those missing gaps, guaranteed with the potency guarantee that we offer at a pharmaceutical grade level, and that's what makes us so different and special. Now, what, you mentioned uh, something. I'm kind of a health nut uh, myself, and um, uh, can you explain what the you mentioned low glycemic index and um, you know not having the crash? Can can you explain what happens when you know when you eat um, a spinach salad and what 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 your blood sugar is doing, and then when you eat a, a Snickers bar, 
what your blood sugar is doing and when you sure. eat a pizza and like, you know what I mean? Kind of go into that yeah. and why it's important for it to be level. For sure. So, so there's a lot of misconceptions. I'm about a misconception type. I'm a misconception type of guy. Not that people misconceive me, but I like to address the misconceptions in my classroom, outside of my classroom. So the th- there, one big misconception is sugar. Uh, I got to be off carbs, sugar free, sugar free. Well, see, there's a misconception there. There, sugar is your brain relies on sugar, glucose. I mean, if you don't have sugar, you're you're not going to survive very long. So there's good sugars and bad sugars. So the thing to focus in from, especially from a poker perspective, is energy. Do you want short bursts of energy and a crash where you're going to lose your focus and you're going to feel drained and that kind of effect in your body also promotes weight gain? Or do you want sustained energy that gives you uh, promotes weight loss and keeps your, your mental focus stable? So glycemic index is really a scale from 1 to 100 that um, rates how quickly sugar is digested and absorbed into your bloodstream. So something like a Snickers bar – well, sure, if that's going to be a high glycemic impact food, it's going to cause a surge in sugar, a surge in your insulin, which is going to bring back down that sugar quickly, causing that crash. And that's what happens if you have a soda or some of the other typical energy drinks out there, which is why people are drinking so many of them because they're having these quick crashes. So they have to raise their blood sugar again, and then it crashes, and they raise it again. And, and it that's crashes. how you give yourself diabetes, right? That's it definitely promotes diabetes too. So, you know, if, if you're trying to sit at a table and focus and not sacrifice your health, you have to be eating low glycemic foods and you have to be eating low glycemic snacks. And this is the solution that we can bring to the table for the, for the snacks for sure and for the foods to a degree with the shakes. Um, so now going to the, uh, to the spinach salad. That's a much more nutrient-dense type of food. You're getting your vitamins. You're getting minerals from that as well. You're getting antioxidants. And again, of course, low glycemic because it's going to be probably combined with some nuts and some chicken perhaps. So all of that is – for sure healthy and i we have salads all the time at yeah the table. and com- you combine that with fiber too when, when you're Absolutely. having a when you're having um uh, a healthy meal like that you're also adding fiber which also helps to slow down the absorption of, of sugar correct uh into your system which is uh, which is fantastic yeah okay yeah i um i i kind of have a routine when i go for uh, live tournaments and i basically do the same thing when i play online you know when i'm going to do the sunday grind and i know i'm going to be playing for 10 or 12 hours and I get all my meals ready beforehand. And so for a live tournament, it's a little bit uh, more of a task because what I'll do is I'll make a smoothie and then I'll put it in the, you know, one of those smoothie uh, containers and then I got to get the cooler and uh, you know, and then I'll have some beef jerky, which, which takes time to make, you know, to go down to the meat market and make all that stuff up. And then I'll have nuts and, and like that. Now this is, you know, for when I go to a live tournament, this is a 45 minute routine every morning uh-huh. That um, to do all this, it takes a lot of work, and and it may even be longer when you count the time that uh, got a particular when it comes to my beef jerky, and uh, <laughs> and so you know I make my own. And uh, anyhow, um, this might be a much easier solution um, to uh, to do because there's no setup time every time before you go. It's a quick little bar that you can keep in your backpack, and uh, and you eat it on uh, every two hours on your break. Exactly, and we, we've got even our shakes. We've got uh, we've got large bags of shakes which you can keep on your you know your kitchen counter for like the routine that you do, or we've got uh, little single individual pouches that you can stick in a few in your backpack with your water bottle. Our shakes just you require water, so really it takes you get a bottle of cold water from the uh, server there at the casino or whatever, and or from your tap if you're playing online at home or something, and that's it. Mix it in, shake it up, and you're good to go. And it's that it's really that simple. Um, so. For the p- player that's on the go, doesn't have the time or the patience to do that amazing routine that you do, and I give you kudos to that. Thank um, you. We definitely have the solution for 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 the average person who does not do that kind of thing. It's 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 really great. And it, yeah, this is the perfect solution for the pizza at, on dinner break. <laughs> sure. Pizza <laughs> really is, a, is a great thing to to have after you've won the tournament and you want to sleep an hour later. Definitely. Yes. <laughs> Pizza, two beers, and you're out. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. Um, you guys have been very generous, and uh, they are going to um, send me a care package for the WSOP. So I'm going to try this stuff out, and um, I know some of you are coming out to the WSOP as well. Hit me up, and um, we'll try these drinks and, and these bars together, and uh, we'll try them out. I'm, I'm anxious to try them on the breaks. 
And because it, <clears throat> with the way the brakes go now, you know, sometimes by the time you use the bathroom, you've only got seven minutes. And you've got to park way out in the North 40 on uh, uh, at the WSOP. And yeah. so I got to run out there and like try to like stuff some beef jerky in my mouth and then run back and then just make it in time <laughs> back from the break, you know? So if I could stick one of these bars in my pocket, that would be <laughs> infinitely easier. So I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. This, uh, this could save some time and maybe make the uh, breaks uh, not stressful and a little more uh, enjoyable. <laughs> for sure. And I mean, the less stress that you take away from, uh, from the breaks, for example, gives you more time to think about, you know, the session that you just had, right? And perhaps what's coming down the line. So anything to, anything to give you a nutritional advantage or any advantage is what we're all about. Plain yes. Yourself. Yeah. And, uh, I'm going to do a live read right now. And speaking of getting an advantage, Elliot Rowe. Yes. You should not play a hand of poker unless you listen to that man's voice first. Meditation tapes before you play. You have to get in the right mindset so that you can focus on poker and have one of your uh, uh, poker uh, poker health uh, bars. Live cash, online MTTs. He, he has MP3s for it all. He's got a confidence booster, the simple volume system. There's no obligation. You can listen to his seven-minute tilt buster for free. You put it on your phone. You can do it right now. The link is in the show notes, or you can go to headsuppoker.poker, and you can find it there. You can put it on your tablet, your computer, whatever you want. You have to have a warm-up routine for everything. Imagine professional athletes if they just walked out of the locker room and started playing football. Professional athletes have a warm-up routine, and you as a poker player need one too. So you need a little 10-minute routine before you start to wager large sums of money for small edges. If you learn nothing else from me, let it be that you have a set routine that you do every time before you play. This is the next step in poker. The mindset advantage, Elliot Rowe. Use the code HUPOKER. Score yourself a little discount. You'll find the link in the show notes. HUPOKER. Okay. Um, I've got a little strategy hand. If you guys want to talk some uh, poker strategy. Sure. Okay. This comes from a one, two, no limit cash game. I know I just talked all that stuff, uh, Laura, about uh, how much other tournaments, but uh, this one's from a, uh... <laughs> <laughs> then you're right up my alley. Here. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, this was in Vegas. This was a few days ago. My wife and I went out there. My brother lives there, and uh, it was just a quick little trip. Uh, my wife went shopping, and I had about three hours to kill. So tournaments were out of the question. <laughs> but I thought, well, we know oh, we if I'm going to be in Vegas and not play. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I went to uh, – where did I go? I went to the Luxor, and uh, they had a little one-two, no limit game with a 300 buy-in. So uh, I buy in. Um, the table is, uh, we're, we're full handed. We're 10 handed. The table is pretty, um, pretty loose and pretty passive. Um, they, uh, they tend to limp a lot. I would say two out of three times, uh, it'll go around limped without a, um, you know, with four or five limpers, no razors. We'll check, see a flop. Uh, there has been one guy that has been pretty antsy. It, it, I got the impression that, you know, he, Bought in with 200, he was down to 100 now, and he was either going to double it up and leave or, or push it in and go out. Because the hand just before this one, he shoved, he, it was a uh, small blind, big blind, and then a limp, and then he shoved all in, and everyone folded. He shoved in for 100 bucks, and everyone folded, and he showed ace five off suit. So I thought that was interesting that he would shove all in there with 50 big blinds, but <laughs> to each his own. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw somebody do that with do seven, so I can see. I understand. There you go. <laughs> each to their own. Each to their own. Yes, to each his own. And we shall own them. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, this guy, the very next hand, he's under the gun, plus one. Um, so the first guy folds, and then it's on him, and he calls two dollars. Then there's a guy to my right in middle position, late middle position, and uh, he's got about six hundred behind. Uh, he's got uh, pretty much the table covered, and um, he limps too. And then we're just as left. We're beginning late position. Uh, we're in the in the hijack, and we have ten seven of diamonds. We've got three hundred behind, and uh, we decide to limp as well. I think. Um, what do you guys think? Are you are you guys normally folding there or limping along as well? Or are you? 
I like to, I personally like to limp and see a flop, and if it's really good, I try to trap and uh, get as much as I can. Yeah, and yeah. if it's bad, I, I don't lose much. So that's my that's my take on that part. If I have the option to limp and get in with with seven ten opsuit, I'm definitely in. Okay. There, there's, there's a philosophy. Uh, it's called LCF poker, limp check fold, <laughs> and um, sometimes it's not a bad philosophy. <laughs> okay. Well, this shirt's one's... made up. Yes. Well, this one's ten seven uh, suited. I, I think uh, ten eight here is a fist pump uh, limp, yeah. and then um, you know you might even argue for a three bet uh, to isolate yeah. uh, get position, and then ten six suited. I think I'm folding, but yeah. uh, ten seven suited. Why not? <laughs> Especially yeah, at, a, yeah. at a passive table like this where it's unlikely. Well, think... raise, build the pot a little bit. Sure, for sure. Why not? Yeah. So I decide to limp. Uh, the button also limps. He's got 600 behind, uh, just like the guy to my right. The small blind folds, and the big blind checks his option, and he's got 300 behind. Um, yeah. So we've got uh, you know one short stack of uh, 100, and then 600. We have 300. And then 600 and 300 again. There's 10 bucks in the pot. Again, we got 10 seven of diamonds. And the flop is king 10 eight with uh, one heart, which will come in on the next street. Uh, but um, so we flop a middle pair. Uh, we've got a horrible kicker. Uh, the big blind checks under the gun plus one, who's got a hunter behind. And he's the guy that shoved all in before with the uh, ace five offsuit, the previous hand preflop. He checks. The guy to my right checks. And now it's on us. We have the button behind us. Are you guys ever betting here? Are you what? Did, you didn't say how many diamonds there was. You yeah. said there was one heart. How many? One how many? heart. There's no diamonds. No diamonds. Okay. Yeah. So no chance of a flush here. No chance of a flush. I, I think it's safe to bet. Uh, like I don't know, three quarters pot, pot, I mean, ten bucks is no. It's not even if it's pot. It's just ten bucks. You know, and see kind of where you're at, and you might get one or two callers. If nobody raises, they probably don't have a king mm-hmm. or a very good king, which means you can probably get them off the hand later. That's my that's my thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm giving a minimal bet just to fish to see if somebody's got that king, and okay. then I'm going to look. Then I'm going to read the player to see if they're just trying to get me off the hand because they're just playing a weak ten too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But well, uh, so you all you guys are all leading here for like seven or ten. Yeah, 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 between seven and ten, wouldn't go more than that. No. Okay. Yeah, I um, I kind of like that. At um, at the time, I thought, see, now on a flop like this, if it was like uh, the ten was the heart, uh, so if if it uh, was king ten eight, and there was one diamond out there, I think I'd be, um, I think I would go for a bet here, but without the diamond, I. Mm-hmm. But then the other part that's going in my head here, too, is that uh, we have three checks in front of us and only one guy left to act. Um, yeah. may, maybe a little pro bet there is is uh, is a good idea. Yeah. My question would be is why are you in the hand in the first place if you're not going to follow it with at least middle pair? Yeah. That's a good point. Um I don't know. With a hand like this and the stacks this deep, I guess I was – Looking to hit the flop just a little bit more than um, – <clears throat> I don't know. I suppose like, okay, what 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 hands are folding here if we bet? I think um, better tens are calling. All kings are calling. Uh, a lot of draws are calling like queen jack, uh, ace jack, ace queen. I don't think they're yeah. going to fold to a bet. Um, but you're still jack. probably ahead uh, of most of those hands. Yeah, yeah. So if a That's brick a comes point. off of the turn, then then you're good. So it's it's all right. Yeah, yeah. I think you guys are right. You can visit me. A lead there is uh, <laughs> is good. Okay, you're, you're an easy sell, my friend. <laughs> yeah, that, that wasn't tough, was it? <laughs> okay, well, I uh, uh, barring good advice, I uh, I don't. I check, and okay. uh, the button the button checks behind. <laughs> okay. Okay. All so right. uh, we go to the turn. We still have ten dollars in the pot. And the turn is the seven of hearts. So the board now is king, ten, eight, seven, and we have two hearts. And again, we've got ten, seven of diamonds. So we turn two pair, puts a flush draw out there. Great draw. Um, 
I'm it's sorry. Uh, it puts a flush dry out there. It also puts a possible uh, uh, straight. Uh, let's see, nine six would be a straight. Jack nine, nine would be a straight. Um, that's it, right? Unless I'm missing yeah. something obvious. Yeah. Uh, now there's flush draws up there. So the way you check, what's that? Just got interesting. And how, how many players are still in the hand now? Six. Uh, five, including okay. us. Okay. So. When it checks through like this, I'm kind of thinking that the only people I could imagine having a king in this spot would be possibly the big blind. And if he does, it's got to be a pretty weak king because he checked behind with everyone else. I agree. I would agree. Okay, you I have know? a question though. It, did it cross your mind that have you been watching for any like slow players that are just like slow playing anything? Anybody at the table doing that at this point? It's passive. You said it was yeah. You said passive at one point, and I wonder if people are limping in with pretty decent hands, just kind of hoping to hit something really big and and you know bluff out your ten seven when they're, they're sitting with pocket kings. Has anybody been doing that to this point? Uh, yes, but not these players. Okay. Okay. Fair yeah. Point. The 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 guy that shoved the uh, the ace uh, ace five off. Um, you know he was. It was pretty active. The guy to my right uh, with the 600 stack, he was probably playing 50% of hands. The wow. button, uh, the same, and the big blind, um, if he had a hand there, he would have raised. He would have raised even, I believe, King Jack off in that spot. Okay. I think. Yep. Uh, just just being at the table for an hour and a half. That's, that was that was my impression. But uh, So when it checks through, I figured the only guy that could probably have a king – would be that would check it in that spot would be the big blind. I right. think everyone else would have would have bet one, including the including the button. Um, All right, that, first act. Now let's see. This is this is exciting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that, that that's my read so far. Uh, okay. So the board again: uh, king ten, eight seven, two hearts. Yeah. The big the big blind checks, and now under the gun right. uh, plus one. Uh, the guy that shoved uh, the. Obviously. The, yeah, the, previously the ace five off. He shoves all in for 98. So into a $10 pot, he bets 98. Huh. Middle position, thinks for a little while, and then he calls. Oh, wow. The guy was 600 to my right, and now it's on us. So we got 10 7 for two pair. There's a flush draw out there, uh, possible straight. Hmm. My guess is the guy that thought is is on a draw. That would be my first impression. It, like he seriously thought about it. It wasn't because he's been watching this play this player, and he 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 watched and he he waited. It wasn't like he. Uh, it he, was not a snap decision. It took him. No, so probably, he doesn't have anything at this point. Because he's waiting to get something. Where he's there, if he's hit, like if he's got a straight at that point. Um, yeah, he would probably uh, shove all in to isolate, I would think. Yeah, just to protect from the flush draws. So, I think so. All right. I did, now I plugged a bunch of ranges into uh, into Poker Slice before I did this, so I could kind of get an idea of the percentages. And that was going to be some of my questions for you guys: Is what do you think he does? Because he he his if he's calling fifty percent of hands, I think he's calling with nine six yeah. suited there, nine six off. He's probably folding in that spot pre flop. I mean. Um, so nine, six is now a straight and that would make sense because, you know, he's going to check the flop because he doesn't, he's only got a gut shot and he's in, he's got two players left to act and then boom, he binks it right on the turn. So you know, I, I, th I think that if he's in the frame of mind where he feels he can get a lot of value on the river, even though there's a risk of a flush coming on the river, which is still not that likely, he wouldn't, he might call to try to make the next us and whoever else think that, um, He's not that strong so that he can trap and get some more value on the river. That's, I, I mean, I've played like that at times. And then there's, it depends on your mindset because then there's other times where like, okay, I got the straight. I don't want somebody to flush me out. So I'm just going to raise and knock him out. And if they call, they call, and I've still got them beat. So Why is no one considering that this guy's on a flush draw? It could be on a flush draw. Be. It could be. I put those in his range too. I put uh, ace two of hearts through ace nine of hearts. I think all those would make sense. Um. Yeah, you know, and then yeah. other uh, random flush draws, too. Once you tell me what happens on the river, I'll let you know if I'm right. How's that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I said he's a great Okay, well, I, so, so you're, um, uh, you're next to act? I'm next to act, yeah. 
So um, and now this is something I can tell you too that uh, that probably might influence your decision here is when the first guy moved all in, um, the two guys to my left that are going to be left to act after me, um, the guy on the button yeah. and the big blind, they instantly looked completely disinterested in this hand. And then when the next guy called, I. I just knew they were folding. You know what I mean? Yeah. If, I don't know if it's the look on their face or they weren't even trying to hide it. You know, they're, they're, <laughs> they're done with this hand. So when yeah. we call yeah. here, I mean, there may be a slight chance that I don't even think is worth the calculation that, the, that one of them is going to call, but I would, I would bet the house that they're not like they just yeah. did not look like they were calling at all. So if we call here, it's going to be one guy all in and then we're going to be heads up for a side pot with the, um, uh, with the guy that called. But in the moment, Laura, um, I thought the same thing that you you said um, right away was that it felt to me like he was on a draw. He w- he paused and he was thinking, and the gears were turning. And um, he, um, my perception was that he didn't notice that the big blind and the button were going to fold because he was just staring at the flop. He wasn't watching the table, you know. So I don't know that he knew that. And, um, yeah, he took a little while to call and just the way he was acting, I felt like he's drawing now, whether that means queen Jack or whether that means a flush draw, I, I felt like he turned some kind of, uh, serious equity, like, you know, um, like he's got, uh, queen nine or something like that for an open ender straight a draw. Lot of at that point in time. Yeah. 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 You know, queen nine for an open ender or, um, you know, and maybe a flush draw to go with it or something I, um, that that was my impression. Was he wasn't made yet? Okay, so so, so keep us in suspense. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you guys do here? Do you call? Do you? <laughs> do you Everybody's call? playing what their nails. So. Okay, so you, you, so the call is for how much? It's for a hundred ninety-five. That was ninety-eight in or ninety-five no, no, to a ten dollar pot. The call is nine is ninety-eight, but you got uh, two hundred in the pot now, right? You figure those two guys are going to fold. But I'm thinking that if you if you uh, you may be able to push all in here, and you may get the uh, the guy with 600 to your right uh, to fold at that point because he doesn't want to do that much action. Uh, but again, you've only got 200 behind, so he has you covered. Um, my, again, that, might, that might incent him to, to I, fold. I, I don't think at this point, that with all those draws out there, and we only have two pair, we may not even have the best two pair, keep in mind. Um, I think it's either fold or shove all in. No, fold or shove all in, I think, is the best thing to do. Um, calling just allows that many more players for sure to to hit one of the draws. I would try to – I would, I would shove and and or fold. It's one of those two. Lose, go for it all or just – Give so it, give just give wrench, it, just yeah. give it up because there's a lot of things that are beating you, and you don't even have the best two pair. There's a set that's beating you. There's better two pairs. There's a str- two two straights on board. There's a river to come and yeah. lots of draws. So that's yeah. that's my that's my thinking. I mean, it depends. Is this late in the session or is this early? Like, it kind of depends on. That's a big factor for me too, right? So. Where is this late late in the session or early in the session? This is about halfway through. I played for three hours. This is about an hour and a half in. And are you up or down at this point? Uh, let's see. I bought in for three hundred, so I guess I'm I'm even. Yeah, you're even. Yeah. Well, uh, that's a tough one. We're on the fence. I'm shoving. I'm shoving. If I'm plan, if I'm planning on being there for more than another for like at least another three hours, I would probably honestly let it go. For me, if I'm going to play conservative and I'm going to play for another three hours, and that's my budget for the day. If if I'm kind of like you know what, it's time to go, and you know it's okay if I lose the three hundred. And I'm feeling half decent about it. I would shove, like Laura said. So I don't know. I'd have to figure it out right at that moment. Well, my thought with shoving was if we shove here, um, okay. The and the two guys fold behind, just like we're almost certain they're going to do. Uh, the guy that shoved all in, he, he has no decision left because he's already made it. Uh, the guy to my right, again, you know, I can I can shove in three hundred, and then it's another two for him to call. Um, He's getting I mean, odds. The, the, yeah, the pot at that point is 500, and it's only 200 more for him to call. He's getting two and a half to one on his money. Um, and at that point, I don't know that he could – that he's folding any hands that are no. that are better than ours. I think he's only – I think he's going to call us with hands that beat us and fold everything that we beat. 
True. And you know what I mean? Like he's probably folding eight, seven for two pair there, uh, which we beat. Uh, and then he's probably calling with 10, eight, which beats us. And with King 10, which beats us and a set of sevens, which beats us. And, um, and then when he is calling, he's calling with stuff that probably has a lot of equity against us. Like, um, you know, uh, queen Jack, maybe with, two, well, that's just one hit, one combination, one hand, queen Jack of hearts. Um, I don't know. I felt like if, if I shoved it, because what if, um, he limped, hmm. but see, that's the thing. I don't think he would limp eights, tens, or kings there pre flop. No, no. Oh, pre flop. If, he, if he's so active, if he's playing 50% of hands, and he's raising quite a bit too. If he had a set here, he, he, he would be pushing, I think. Yeah, I would agree. So I think he's on a draw after analyzing it all. I think there's more chance that he's on a draw than he has a hand uh, based on his action. Therefore, I think it's safe to shove. Shut and him. if he calls, you've got him beat. And if he hits, he hits, and that's the end of it. If he hits, um, then that's the old river story. You got yeah. one more. <laughs> yeah, I think. I, think I, think there's, I don't think I would fold. I for sure wouldn't fold. It. Now, usually, while I'm thinking this long, I usually get called. I usually get the clock called on me. Just saying. <laughs> 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 but uh, no, I think I think that's a good analysis. I think he I think he's on a draw, and uh, I think it's safe to shove at that point. And if you uh, if he does fold and the other guy's beating you, you only lost a hundred bucks. So what do you do? And uh, yeah, and if he calls and he's on a draw, then that's what you want. And if he's got you beat, then you have outs. So yeah, not too bad a scenario. You, you, you'll actually know on 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 uh, you know I you know. We're not I definitely not folding. Calling isn't necessarily a bad thing. You're only into 100. You don't want to lose necessarily more than that. And you're going to know on the river because the, the two guys are going to fold right after you. The button and the big the big blind is going to fold. Guy, uh, the guy who shoves got no he's got no options, right? So if 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 you call though and you miss, you better be prepared to fold. Like if, because because otherwise yeah. you might as well just shove and get fold equity on those other two guys because you don't know if they're going to fold. You're assuming. Well, right? do you, does, so does, how, the, does the guy right to to the right actually look like if you call and and, and it breaks off, then uh, is the guy who who's got the six hundred behind or now five hundred behind? Is he actually going to then shove? Does he is he the kind of guy who has sho- has he done any shoving? That would be oh, the question. like big bluffs. No, yeah, the guy. No, the guy to your right. The guy to your right. The guy who's got six hundred dollars. Is he the kind of guy like if it bricks off, is he going to shove, or could you just check it down and you may be good? Uh, if he, so if he misses his draw, is he still going to shove bluff? Is he? Yeah, is he on gonna the sh- river? That 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 would be my question. If he's not the kind of guy, then you may have won three hundred dollars just by having two pair here. I think I that if the river bricks off, uh, I think. You think he would shove or just just check? Man, I think he would probably check because um, the guy that originally shoved, although I put him pretty wide, I think, uh, you know, he could have a lot of draws. Um, he could have two pairs. He could have – he might be able to have sets there um, because I think at that point, eights and tens are in the original shover's range. You know, he, he might – limp those because he shoved such a weak hand previously and now all of a sudden he's got tens and he's like slow playing trying to get value i i could see he might have a, a sets there to pair and then all the draws you know like uh, any nine i think he's shoving there um and like that so hmm. so i'm dying to know what happened on the river yeah really okay. Like, I, I guess, okay, so I what, did you, no, what is, did you do what did you do what did you do <laughs> I think that the uh, original shover has a lot of value uh, in his range, some draws, and then the guy call, calling uh, might have some some value, but I think he's got a lot more draws than, than value hands. Um, so I call, um, and my reasoning behind calling was I thought if uh, the river blanks out and um, I might be able to um, – uh, if, if, if it hits with uh, a draw and I think I'll know if, if he hits, then, um, yeah. then I can get away from it. And yeah. if it yeah. doesn't, then, um, then I might be able to squeeze a little bit of value if he was, you know, if he's got eight, seven or something, or, uh, maybe he's got like queen jack and, and a, um, uh, maybe he gets a small pair on the on the river or something. I don't know. I thought I, in my mind at the at the time I thought I might be able to get like 150 bucks worth of value. Right. But 
Okay. Maybe, that, so, maybe not. Um, so I call. Um, the river is the five of hearts. Uh, uh, we get we got the two folds. The the oh the we button. did yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. In my mind, they folded already. Yes, <laughs> we did get, <laughs> get the button and the big blindfold. <laughs> okay. Uh, so um, we call. Hearts. Now the pot is uh, let's see three oh six. Yeah. And three yeah. uh, oh eight. Yeah. And uh, the the river is the five of hearts. So the board now is king. Ten, eight, seven, five, and the third heart came in. So we got three hearts, and we got ten, seven for two pair. And the guy to my right instantly shoves. And so, representing the flush or having the flush. Well, I don't know. What was your plan in your mind for right. call? What did you say? This is my this is my biggest thing. I don't know if it's my biggest thing, but it's, it's definitely one of my biggest things in poker. <clears throat> what was your plan on a turn? Like you got to think about what you're going to do in the river. If you're calling on the turn, you have to have a plan that you're going to continue with. If you say I'm going to call on the turn, if I don't, if something happens in the river that I don't like, I'm prepared to fold. But yeah. if you if you say that to yourself and then you change your mind, you might as well have just shoved and have fold equity, right? So. So what was your thinking on the turn again when you said to yourself, finally, I'm going to call? Is it call and fold if he shoves or a call and call if he shoves it regardless? No, I wasn't going to call regardless. I thought if a heart comes, um, I'm going to kind of, that'll be a, a game time decision whether it looks like he's bluffing or not. But as fast as he moved, he looked very confident. Well, here's yeah. something that happens to me with Mark actually all the time <laughs> is I get in these situations where I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident about my hand and I do the thing that I just said at the beginning where I would call and this is where I get caught all the time because this is what Mark is teaching me actually is what is your next move? If you're just going to call, are you prepared to follow it through? What are you doing? If you're calling and you don't really have any other options and you don't think you think that if nothing else hits or somebody else hits something and all you're stuck with now is 10-7, you just wasted $100 because yeah. I think it was 100 you calling, right? So you just wasted $100. If you're not prepared to represent that on the river at some point, then why are you wasting $100 to begin with? You have to know this is what I'm learning in poker right now is what is your next move? Why am I making this call if I'm not prepared to do something with it in the end? Because at that point in time, I think if I'm not prepared to follow it through, then I'm probably just folding. I'm either shoving or folding in that, but I don't know that I'm necessarily calling thinking it through now because now you're in a position where you don't know what you're going to do. I think from, from the hands perspective, um, uh, a guy I played poker with, he said this thing to me once uh, it's called, you know, the story checks out. And my, I say this a lot of times, my kids absolutely hate it. But anyway, the the, the, the analysis here of after the shove, if he had two hearts, if the guy right beside you to your right had the two hearts um, and he hemmed and hawed a little bit because it's a hundred bucks and then he put it in because there was there was another heart that came on the turn and then uh, you get the uh, the uh, another heart on the river. That would be my analysis where, in fact, the story checks out. It kind of, from the way he played it and the way that he shoved, and again, this is you watching him play, it doesn't sound like a bluff. Um, it, to me, it doesn't sound like a bluff. I would agree. Yeah. 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 I don't think so because, uh, I mean, in, uh, in that, well, I guess I, I'm trying to say I don't think it's a bluff either, so I'm agreeing with you. Although that, that came out completely wrong when I first started out. <laughs> But um, Not the sentence with I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, okay, there we go. I agree with you. I don't think it's a bluff either. <laughs> because if uh, like really what's he bluffing with here? Like let's say um uh, Queen Jack uh for Miss Straight, um that's a uh, that that's a bluff. Um but he's still got the other guy that's all in. So he's shoving he's shoving into an empty side pot here. Uh, yeah. and then just going to lose it to the guy that's already moved all in. Like that doesn't make any sense, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I just don't think he's, he's bluffing here. And when the heart comes on the river, um, is he really shoving a set there? No, I don't think so. I think he's checking it. I think one, he's checking. One thing to that, there's a small percentage of the time where he, it doesn't really make sense for him to shove because that other guy's already all in. That's the part you mentioned there. He could do that with knowing he doesn't have the best hand to get us off the hand so that he has a better chance of winning against the guy who's already all in. Cause it's just less competition, guy, yeah. less competition. That's, that's, uh, that is a small factor in my thinking sometimes. It's not the smartest play in the world, but 
it's there. And that's something to consider as well. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Well, I, uh, I, I don't know if I was just, uh, it, but I just snap folded. Like okay. I, as soon as he right. moved all in, right. okay. there was no snap thought. I, I just cool. like, I yeah, literally awesome. broke my arm getting my cards into the mouth. <laughs> like, it, it was like, I could not fold fast enough. <laughs> and, uh, he, um, Did he show? So what? He had the flush, right? He, he had a six of hearts for oh. the flush. Yeah. Okay. And then the original uh, shover. Uh, what do you guys think he had? Uh, King, I think he was. A, I he think was, he had like a weak king. I think he was. He had a nine. Okay, he had ten seven. The oh. same hand we did, only offsuit. Oh, <laughs> <my God. Yeah. laughs> so we'd have been splitting there. Wow. But uh, yeah, I thought that was an interesting, uh, interesting hand. Thanks for sharing that. That was good. That's nice. yeah, no problem. Hey, well, th- thank you, uh, thank you guys for coming on to the show. Um, we will put uh, links of uh, Poker Health in the show notes, and if anyone wants to uh, check out your products and try them at uh, at the poker table, they can go to PokerHealth.com. That's awesome. Can I add one last uh, point, uh, Steve? Yes. Awesome. When you were you were alluding to uh, athletes um, preparing for for an event or something like that, you know, it could be like a week ahead of time or the day ahead of time, a week ahead of time. You know, like the athletes who take make their bodies their business and um, take it very seriously, just like a lot of poker players do. They're 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 training off the court, off the the track, wherever. Um, for months and months and months consistently. And when I say training, I'm not talking about the exercising part. I'm talking about maintaining their body, maintaining their health and their nutrition so that when it comes time for the event, they are locked and loaded, ready to go, maximum probability of success. So so when it comes to nutrition, as a biology teacher, when it comes to nutrition and health, your body requires time to uh, acquire and utilize the nutrients properly, especially if you're at a, at a normal where that you don't want to be. And to maintain it, it's it's important to be consistent. So the beauty, again, of what USANA has produced is personalized, customized nutritional products that are uber, uber convenient. There's a shout-out to Uber. Uh, super, super, <laughs> super convenient. And even the supplements, a lot of people don't want to deal with supplements because of the bottles. It's a hassle. And so we've got a solution where you can literally customize uh, 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 AM, PM, health pack and you literally just take the AMP and pack put it in your pocket or your backpack or your purse or whatever even if you're traveling take the amount you need and it's there for you you don't have to deal with the bottles so it's it's a wonderful system and all you got to do is do the true health assessments on pokerhealth.com and touch one of us will touch base with you and help you customize a package that works just for you and it's literally that simple and you've got the Olympic standard, so quote unquote, uh, nutritional advantage. With no fingertips. aftertaste. <laughs> and uh, the drink has no aftertaste. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So anyways. you know, uh, Paul, you uh, you mentioned something that you wanted to uh, speak about failure. I, I think the um, uh, uh, the neat thing is, you know, in in my poker playing career, and I remember uh, it's interesting. The fellow that introduced me uh, to poker. Um, was a very good friend of mine, um, and so I started probably playing avidly probably about six uh, six years ago, um, right right around the time that uh, our beloved Winnipeg Jets uh, returned to uh, Winnipeg from uh, from Atlanta. So a friend spoken of mine, like a true Canadian, yeah, true Canadian, right? So <laughs> it, um, it he introduced me to the game of poker. Uh, you, you know, you take someone to a casino and they walk away with a little bit of money. And the first time, and I, I was I was hooked. It was it was a fantastic experience, and uh, I made the mistake of taking to my uh, to my friend, uh, you know, you know, talking to my friend, and and you know, really, um, uh, you know, about poker and about things like that. And I didn't talk to my friend about his health. And uh, tragically, two days before his fortieth birthday. Uh, he passed away from a heart attack because he wasn't taking care of his health. And so yeah. it doesn't really matter how good you are um, at a poker table or how good you are in life. If you're not taking care of your health, which is your number one asset, um, it, it, it doesn't really matter in the long run. So uh, I, I, I'm fascinated by the world of poker and how it is a community, how it is a family. 
And I would just encourage, you know, us as leaders in the community of poker players and yourself, you know, make sure that uh, we're focusing on health so that we can uh, be around a long time to play this game that we love. Well said. Right on. Well said. Well said. Right on. Well, thank you guys for coming on. This was a, this was a lot of fun. Thank you right. very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Well, that was interesting. I'm excited to try their products. I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do now when I go out to the WSOP is normally like you guys know my routine and I have all my snacks and everything. I think what I'll do is I'll basically just bring dinner. And then what I'm going to do for all these breaks, instead of running out to the car to drink, you know, uh, 10 ounces of a, of a smoothie is I'm going to try these bars and see how they work. So if anyone wants to try them, uh, hit me up when you're out at the WSOP and uh, I'll pull them out of my backpack for you so we can try them together. Um, dates for the WSOP. Um, I'm going to be out there from June 20th until June 27th for certain. And it could be a couple days longer in either direction or both. <laughs> not really sure yet. Uh, Derek and Mark, they're going out uh, also on uh, June 20th, and they're going to be there for the, I think, three weeks after that. Uh, Mike is going uh, significantly sooner. Uh, so if you guys want to meet up, uh, send me a, a, a tweet, and we'll schedule some kind of TPE Heads Up Poker Podcast uh, meetup. So that'll be fun. Speaking of TPE... Tournament Poker Edge. You play tournaments, join the TPE community. Learn from, talk to, and interact with the pros you hear all the time on this podcast. You can watch videos, you can watch free videos. There's a bunch of free videos up there. Uh, Click on the link in the show notes, it'll take you straight to that page. We've got a bunch of new series that just came out by Andrew Brokus has a new series coming out. It's the W Coop. I just started watching that one last night. Very, very cool. It's a $5,000 entry online tournament. Um, very, very cool. Uh, I got through video one and I'm about uh, 10 minutes into video two. Uh, it's a hand history review. He's got videos also on bluffing, evaluating bluffs, constructing ranges, continuation bets, playing in the big blind, value betting. It's all there at tournamentpokeredge.com. Go through the free videos. Check them out. Enter your email and then you'll have access to all the free videos. And there's lots of them. When you join the community, you'll get access to almost 2,000 videos all about tournaments. And they keep rolling out more each and every week. The forum is awesome. You can post a hand that you played and get feedback from the community and from the pros. You can message anyone on the site. When you join, use the code HUP month, HUP quarter, or HUP year, depending on how long you sign up for. I just do the year. Save yourself some cash. Use that coupon code. Study and learn with other people that are just like you and me. It will be the best thing you've ever done for your tournament game. I guarantee it. Thank you for tuning in. And here is your weekly motivational speech. How easy and how convenient is it for us to blame everything and everybody for the things that we have going on in our lives? There is a such thing as you being a positive and a great person with the best of intentions towards everybody. And shit is rough and you just can't get a break. But most of you, most of you, are waking up every day, looking for pain, dysfunction, drama, unemployment, being broke, struggling, dropping every excuse in the book about your childhood and the problems and dysfunction that you grew up in that's stopping you from becoming successful. You don't like your friends, so why are you still with them? You don't trust your managers, agents, and lawyers, so why are they still there? Do you really expect your life and career to be any different from messing with the same things, people, and situations. That's all I'm saying.